So before we start, I'd like to give a big shout out to all soap makers out there because soap making is truly an art. And that's what I would like to invite you to do, to do art with me. The possibilities are endless and you're gonna have so much fun. I chose to use what I already had at home, but you can experiment with different things, with different recipes. And I recommend that you always do small batches when you're trying a different recipe and incorporating new ingredients. Just in case something goes a little different than you had planned so that you don't get super upset. But anyways, it's an art and there's no right or wrong. Just always be very careful when you use lye and we're gonna get to that point in a minute. The whole point for me to embark on this soap making journey was one, because I wanna stop putting so many harsh chemicals in my body and two, I really worry about the amount of trash that all these beauty products have. That's why for my mold, I'm gonna upcycle this milk box and this is gonna turn into my mold. But please feel free to buy your mold or use any other container that you might already have available in your house. Before you start your soap making process, it's very important that you have all the ingredients and everything you're gonna need measured, your safety gear, all available for you. I'm gonna leave in the description below everything you need for your soap making process. These are the ingredients that I'm gonna be using for my soap making. Aloe. I absolutely love this plant and all its incredible properties. Aloe is an amazing skin moisturizer. It has anti-aging properties because of its antioxidants, vitamin C and E. This is distilled water made by Mother Earth. Cinnamon. I love the smell of cinnamon. And because now in the North Hemisphere, we are in the fall, so cinnamon is an amazing warming spice. It has astringent properties, it has antifungal, antibacterial, antioxidants, therefore it's gonna help with cell aging. It helps to calm your muscles and mind. Sage. You've probably heard of smudging with sage. It's an ancient practice that cleans the space of negative energies. It generates wisdom and clarity and promotes healing. Now imagine that on your skin. It's very important to always approach plants with respect so we don't end up misappropriating any ancient traditions. If you choose to purchase herbs or any plant, make sure you get them from an organic source as you don't want to bring pesticides and all these funky energies into your beautiful soap making art. Olive oil and coconut oil are some of the most common oils used in soap making because they're very moisturizing. And you also need lye. This one, I was very resistant because yes, it's a very harsh chemical and it can burn your skin really bad. So always be careful when you deal with lye. But then you might be thinking, oh my God, Chris, I thought that we were gonna do something that's chemical free. But everything is chemical. We are made of chemicals. But yes, there are some chemicals that we don't wanna have any near us. Lye is a substance that's produced by mixing ashes with water. And it's been used since the Cleopatra times in their soap making. And when you mix the oils, the water and the lye, there's a process that's called saponification, and that's where the lye turns into soap. By the time your soap finishes the curing process, there's gonna be no lye in there, so no worries. Nothing is gonna burn your skin. Let's get the soap making process started, shall we? So while our oils are melting, we're gonna prepare the light solution and we need safety gear. Please make sure you're wearing gloves every time you touch the lye, otherwise it can really burn your skin. And also make sure you wear goggles because once you mix the lye with the water, the temperature is gonna rise and if there's a bubble that happens, you don't want that splash on your eyes. So always, always, always wear gloves and goggles when you're dealing with lye. Make sure you have windows open and that you always measure the water first and you pour the lye on top of the water, never the other way around. When the oil's finished melting, that's when I like adding my flavors. 
So to this side, we're gonna add the sage. Before we add the light to the oils, we need to make sure that the temperatures, they're kind of the same. With the help of a stick blender, we're now gonna blend the lye and the oils. And you wanna add it very carefully. And you wanna blend this for about five to six minutes. So once you have a thick paste, that's when the batter is ready. Here's where you can get super creative with your soap making process. You can add honey, you can add essential oils, you can add other spices, you can add charcoal, which is very cleansing. I'm gonna add my cinnamon to half of it just to make it colorful once I pour into the mold. And here's where I add my cinnamon. Ta-da! Final step. You don't wanna to take too long to start pouring the soap into the mold, otherwise it starts to get a little hard. Now I finish pouring. Let's just mix them up a little bit. Well, now that my kitchen is officially a mess, we're done with the soap making process. The soap is gonna stay in the mold for another 24 hours before we can remove the mold and cut the soap and then it needs to cure for another four to six weeks. So in the curing process, that's when the lye completely disappears and it's not gonna be an issue for your skin anymore. And I always keep my gloves and goggles on while I'm cleaning the kitchen, just to make sure I don't end up burning my skin because the lye is still available and can, can burn us.